Here we go again. We're going in the dugout, our weekly chat with high school baseball coaches from around the state of Michigan. In the dugout is brought to you by the Michigan High School Baseball Coaches Association. We've had the opportunity to have some great conversations this season. Today is no different as we welcome in the head coach of not only the number one team in the state, but the entire United States. His name is Matt Petrie. Coach, I know it's game day, and as we record these segments on Wednesday, uh, we understand that you know, you've know you got a lot on your mind, so we thank you for taking a few minutes today to spend with us. Yep, thanks for having me, Lauren, and I appreciate everything that State Champs does for not only high school baseball, but um, you know high school athletes and athletics in general. Well, we appreciate you saying that. Uh, I want to first ask you, with reference to the team, we'll start with the team and the program. Um, and I think the big question that maybe a lot of people may ask, because it, it almost seems like it's, it's crept up on us so fast, but how did we get here You know, to where Orchard Lake is in the position it is today? I mean, the win streak now is, is at 60 uh, somewhere in there. Some, I don't, somewhere. I, I, don't I know. You're, that, yeah. I, I know. I know. Uh, but it's very impressive. Um, and so I guess I want to ask, what has happened? Uh, maybe you can just talk a little bit because I know this is a process. This is obviously something that has taken years uh, to build. Um, but, the, the you know, what are some of your thoughts? Uh, and obviously a lot of good luck has to go with this, too, and, and some things just, you know, stars aligning. But um, some of the things that you felt – the Eaglets have been, uh, you know, to to be in a position where there's so much tremendous talent. Success follows with that. It has to start when many of these players were young. So when did it begin and how did it happen? Um, so, you know, the thing that I think is most important in our program is, you know, obviously getting talented players. But, um, you know, once you're, you know, you get those talented players is, getting them together, working year round as a team, putting in that extra effort. And that's something that, you know, maybe the last five or six years that, um, you know, we've had is not only good players, but because there are so many good players, they have to work hard year round at their craft or, you know, they're not going to see the results on the field as much as they want. And we go, um, you know, we start as soon as school starts right after um, Labor Day weekend, we're, we're working out three days a week. Um, we go to 2SP. Um, they do a phenomenal job with our guys, um, you know, not only from a strength um, point of view, but from, uh, you know, mobility, um, speed, um, things like that. And then we kind of get rolling into our um, hitting four mans um, beginning in November. And so it's, it's always something, well, you know, we encourage guys to play multiple sports. If there's, um, if they're not playing a sport in a particular season, we always have something available to them um, you know, throughout the off season. And it's, you know, the older guys taking the younger guys under their wing and getting them, um, you know, ready for when it's their time to, to contribute and compete. Yeah. I mean, I think you've built a great culture there. That's, that's a, uh, a great example of, um, you know, just seeing those guys really, you know, every tier, uh, as, leaders get older and, and you can see them taking the, the young players under the wing. I love how you incorporate, you know, as much of, of some of the young talent to get their opportunities in the big moments when they can. Um, now, before we get back to the team, I do want to talk about you and your family a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of the players nowadays, heck, they don't remember the 1984 Tigers. Uh, but, you know, you know, your father, Dan Petrie, is a former Tiger, of course, played a huge role on that staff in the World Championship. Uh, he was a key figure in the 87 AL East title run. Uh, 11 seasons in all, he played with the Tigers. Very beloved here uh, by those who remember the Tigers in the 80s. You were born during those years. <laughs> so yeah. many, pe many people don't know, perhaps, that your brother Jeff Petrie is a defenseman for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, which is outstanding. You were a pitcher at Brother Rice, the uh, 2003 team, even though you guys fell short in the title game, uh, was one of the best ever at, at Brother Rice. I think a lot of people believe that who you know follow the Brother Rice baseball program. Um, 36 and 4, you guys. You had guys like Doug Pickens, Dan Lynch, yourself. Uh, State Champs is 20 years old, actually, this fall, so it falls right in line to when mm -hmm. you were uh, at uh, at Brother Rice. And we, you know, of course, covered the Warriors extensively that season. You went to Michigan. Um, did you have dreams and, and opportunities to hopefully play beyond your days at Michigan? 
I certainly had dreams, um, opportunities. No, you know, you know, I didn't, you know, develop the way that I, I had hoped. I ran into some injury trouble at Michigan, but um, you know, getting into coaching has been the biggest blessing that's come out of me, you know, playing at Michigan for the three years that I did. Right. Um, so let's get into your coaching journey. You know, what made you want to do it? What and who were some of the people that were instrumental in helping you? Um, you know, not only when you were starting out, but as you've continued coaching through today. Yeah, it's kind of a funny story how I got um, started out. You know, after college, I was still living in Ann Arbor. Um, one of the guys that I played with um, at Michigan, Mike Schmidt, um, took the JV head coach job at Dexter High School. And he was looking for somebody to help out um, with the pitchers during the offseason. Um, so I, you know, agreed to help out in the offseason. Then about a week before the season started, um, the varsity coach stepped down and um, my buddy Mike had to, you know, go help out with the varsity. So they were without a JV coach, something that I had never bargained for, had aspirations to do anything like that. They just kind of said, hey, you know, these guys don't have a coach. We'd rather not have a parent do it. Um, this is something you'd be interested in. And, you know, I've been working with the guys all off season, so I didn't want to kind of leave them high and dry. So I stepped in um, and coached a, a year of JV baseball at, uh, at Dexter. And then um, as fate would have it, um, you know, my mentor, Bob Riker from Brother Rice called me. They had a, a JV opening at the time. He gave me a call and said, hey, you know, if you want to coach JV, we'd love to have you here. And, you know, I immediately accepted that. Um, and, was all set to go to Brother Ice and, you know, be on Bob's staff, coaches JV team. And then um, there was an opening at St. Mary's um, and, you know, my brother went to St. Mary's. Um, so we had some connections here. My dad coached at, at St. Mary's, um, was an assistant. Um, so they asked me to interview and I think I was 24 years old at the time. And I called um, Riker and just kind of asked, you know, his advice on it. And he's like, you should absolutely interview for it. You know, jobs in the Catholic League Central don't come available too often. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I went, I interviewed, I thought the interview went well, but I was actually the second choice. Um, and then, you know, they called me to let me know that, hey, you had a good interview. We're just going to go with the other guy. So I, in the meantime, called Bob and said, hey, I didn't get the job. Um, you know, I'd like to still coach JV or Brother Ice if, you know, if that's still available. He said, yeah, absolutely. Well, then about an hour later, St. Mary's calls me back and said their first choice did not accept the position. So they were re-offering it to me. So then I had to go back to Riker and I just go, hey, I have no idea what to do at this point. Like, what do you think? And he, go, he goes, hey, you know, the, the Catholic Central jobs don't open it. I think you'd be crazy not to take it. So it was, you know, with his guidance and the guidance of my dad that, you know, I ended up at St. Mary's and, you know, 12 years later, here we are. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure uh, Coach Riker and probably Coach Kalzinski were like, well, this job's not opening up. So I can tell you that you've got to uh, <laughs> find something, something else. Uh, but um, you're, you know, getting back to the, the Eaglets now, you, you end last season as, as national champions. And, um, you know, you're named the 2021 National High School Baseball Coach of the Year. Like, what an incredible honor that is. How did you hear uh, about the team, you know, all of a sudden, you know, being named number one and, and you as the country's top coach? Yeah, you know, it's something we, you know, we're kind of following all year, just the, some of the national rankings. Oh, yeah. and. You know, I think we were in the top 10 and then moving up to the top five. And I think it was, um, I think it was Buford, Georgia was number one pretty much all year. Um, and they got beat um, two out of three in their, you know, state playoffs. So it was kind of something the guys started talking about. It was like, hey, you know what, if we went out, you know, it, it could be us, you know, moving up to that number one spot. And, you know, I didn't dwell on it too much, but, you know, once we, we won, um, the people from collegiate baseball said, hey, we're going to name you national champions, which was a, was a very cool experience. How did you break it to the team? Uh, I think I think they knew just because, you know, we did we did we did move into that number one spot maybe a week or two prior to um, the state championship last year. So we kind of figured if we won um, that we would do it. Um, so after we won the state championship, we were designing our state championship rings and the guys or asked if they could put national champions on it. And I go, well, let's design it two ways, <laughs> one with it, one without it. And, um, you know, it ended up coming to fruition where they, um, they contacted us maybe first week of July or end of June to let us know that they were naming us national champions. 
Yeah, it's it's incredible and it's awesome and uh, it's great that Michigan's represented uh, like it is and especially with your program on Monday night. Um, you know, we got to see each other. Brock Porter was named the DAC Foundation's Male Athlete of the Year. Just another accolade on top of everything he's accomplished. And I don't know if people truly realize what a special talent uh, he is. Um, you know, DJ LeMahieu came a few years after you at Brother Rice. I think there was a feeling even in high school that there was, you know, the sky was the limit for him uh, back then. Um, I mean, he might be a Hall of Famer before his career is said and done. Who knows? But in, it's been incredible regardless. Uh, in terms of potential, because, you know, Brock not only is such an outstanding performer, you know, humble, focused. It seems like his head is always in the right place. Just a wonderful family. He's got a great support system. Um, are the stars really just aligning for this kid? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a, a long way to go to have a career like DJ LeMahieu had right. or is having, um, you know, but he certainly has all the tools. And like you said, it's it's not just his on field talent. It's all the uh, the um, the extra things, the, the stuff that, you know, college programs and professional organizations are looking for. He's very self motivated, motivated. He's disciplined. Um, he's got a good, like you said, support system with his his family, his parents and grandparents and things like that. So, you know, are the stars aligning? I don't know, but he certainly has, you know, all the resources and um, the background to to have a successful career. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of, of pitching prospects that you've seen at the high school level, he's got to be right up there uh, with one or two that you, that you had an opportunity to not just coach, but just, you know, either compete against or watch. Yeah, you know, two guys that, that come to mind that had great, you know, college careers. Um, I believe one of them um, is still playing, maybe both of them, but um, Carl Kaufman and um, mm. Matt Rupenthal from Brother Rice, um, those were guys that were – um, when I was first coming up as a coach, those were guys like, holy crap, we got to face yeah. these guys. These guys are, these guys are yeah. ridiculous. And then, yeah. you know, uh, Matt doing what he did at Vanderbilt and then mm. um, Carl at Michigan and being a part of that um, national runner up team. Um, you know, those are the guys that were the best you know, prospects that I've seen, um, you know, in high school baseball since I've been a coach anyways. Yeah, it's super exciting, and it doesn't come along you know, often, so I suggest people, you know, again, we've got some more of the tournament here. Go ahead and watch uh, Brock pitch, and it's fun just to, to speculate, and uh, we're proud of these guys. And, and watch the feature I did on Brock for the awards. You can hear all of his stats and all that stuff. But you've got almost a dozen D1 college players on this roster. Uh, Brock going to Clemson, Ike Irish to Auburn, uh, Blake Grimmer to Tennessee, Notre Dame is getting Ryan Mooney, uh, Jack Crichton, Jason Oliver, Nolan Schubert all going to Michigan. Uh, Jake Dresselhout and Ryan McKay to Michigan State. And, um, you know, I always pronounce his name. Is it Siren? Is that it? Kieran. Kieran. Kieran, sorry. Going yeah. to Kent State. Um, so I go back to it again. Uh, and, and you kind of explained, you know, these guys put in the work. And this is something mm -hmm. that takes, you know, all season, all year. Um, but they've built such an incredible chemistry. And when you have a collection of talent, that always doesn't happen. Yeah, and I think, you know, that goes to, you know, kind of the model that we have in our program is we want the guys around each other as much as possible for as long as possible. You start, you know, you can't show up on the second Monday in March for tryouts and expect chemistry to just come out of nowhere. Um, you know, you need to get after it in the off season, and that's what all of our guys do. They're all in there together. It's, you know, three days a week um, to start, and then we even get into, you know, five, six days a week when we start hitting and throwing bullpens later in the winter. Uh, but that's really, you know, the separator to me is, you know, getting those guys together. And um, obviously they're all, you know, very talented, but, you know, there's different levels of talent. And, you know, with them being together, they push each other. And, you know, there's guys that were certainly, um, you know, very th highly thought of when they came in as freshmen. And then there's other guys, um, you know, like – Kieran Cahey, for example, right. is he's worked extremely hard and, you know, he's about 5'10", 160 pounds and he's having yeah. just an incredible, incredible yeah. career and um, going to Kent State. So, you know, for every, you know, quote unquote, blue chip guy that we have, there's guys like Kieran and Ryan McKay who work very, 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 very hard to to get where they're at. And, you know, those guys deserve a lot of credit as well. 
Absolutely. Uh, just a couple more for you. We're talking with Matt Petrie of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I was reading the Tony Garcia article in the Free Press, and they were saying it's candy in the dugout. It's all a sugar high. <laughs> yeah, so that was um, – so we have a, a new assistant coach um, on staff this year, Aaron Wilson, um, and he, you know, he likes to keep things loose in the dugout. And he, you know, right before the season started, he goes, hey, what do you think about snacks in the dugout? And I, <laughs> you know, I thought about it at first. I'm like, I don't know. It might be a distraction. But I'm like, hey, we'll give it a whirl if it, you know, if it helps the guys play loose. So we got Skittles in there, gummy bears, um, you know, all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know, with the, with the healthy stuff, the protein bars and stuff like that. But, yeah, they, you know, they enjoy it a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, no, they're having a lot of fun, and that's the most important thing. Uh, Division two champions, 2015, 2019, 2021, you guys are competing in Division one this year. We talked a little bit about this when I saw you on Monday. You know, regional semifinal against, I, I think they're a 26-win Lakeland team. They've got a lot of wins. Um, this would be the program's first Division one state title. Should you be able to to uh, run it from here on out? Talk about the unique challenge uh, this final stretch will be. Uh, obviously, it could be another matchup with your alma mater coming up but uh division one you know the, they're all good teams especially from here on out yeah and that's something you know when you you look at the difference between division one and division two is division two's best teams are certainly right up there with uh division one but there's a lot more depth in um division one that we've noticed and um you know what we're seeing is starting from you know the district um final on saturday with west bloomfield um, if we want to make a run to the state finals, we're going to have to beat a division one pitcher every time out, you know, it's going to, um, move on today with most likely, um, Tate Farquhar from, um, from Lakeland, um, a Michigan state commit who, you know, we're very familiar with, uh, Lakeland and their program. We actually train at the same facility in the off season. So this is going to be a fun one this afternoon. All of our kids have grown up playing summer ball together, stuff like that right down the road. So, um, you know, I'm good friends with, uh, with Coach Farquhar, I coached his older son, Trent, who's, you know, the starting second baseman at Michigan State. So there's a lot of familiarity, and it's, it's going to be a fun one this afternoon. All right. Well, Coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us in the duck out. Good, good, good luck in the playoffs. Uh, I know – I know Brock uh, won't be able to pitch at the All-Star game uh, that will be coming up because I think he's heading to Clemson in just a few weeks, and they're probably pulling him from doing anything other than uh, you know what, what they've got scheduled for him. But J Jake Dresselhouse, Jack Crichton will be representing the Eaglets in the 7 p.m. game. Uh, tickets at, at the Comerica Gate for, for the All-Star game, and state champs will be live streaming the game. But before I let you go, you know we're, we're getting a, a 4 p.m. and a 7 p.m. game for the All-Stars uh, this season, and that just means more kids get an opportunity you know to play against great competition one final time in high school it's all good right yeah absolutely um you know it's it's something that the coaches association looked at this offseason kind of seeing um how they can get more more guys involved whether they did it you know an east west north south game or whatever they decided on on two games and um you know what's a, a really cool opportunity for me is you know this is uh, i have an opportunity to coach in that game this year so that will awesome. be uh That'll be fun, you know, especially um, being able to coach Jack and Jake one more time. Um, you know, we had a lot of qualified guys to go there, but you know, as you know, they have the the two school uh, two per school rule, so yep. that was uh, that was tough deciding. But um, you know, it's a, it's an incredible honor for all the kids involved. Well, Coach Beach, thank you, sir. Good luck, and uh, appreciate your time today. Thanks, Lauren. Thanks for having me on. Okay.